what does mass adoption mean? You guys have probably heard Charles bring this question up. Uh, many people bring it up. Um, I've seen this on other podcasts and other YouTube channels that are dedicated to mass adoption or discussing mass adoption. And there's some really good podcasts out there. And I highly recommend that you review those. But we're also going to touch on uh, subjects like that during this podcast. So what we'll do is we'll roll, roll over to Philippe and try to get what does this mass adoption thing mean? You know, what, how does that fit for you? Rick, that's a great question. So that's the, I think that's like the billion or if you want to consider it trillion dollar question for cryptocurrency when mass adoption and people have been touting that mass adoption is coming soon. It's, you know, it might be next month, it might be next week, or it might be in 2020 when the next halving happens. But there's a lot of conflicting answers as to what mass adoption is. And, you know, people are under the assumption that everyone's going to drop everything and run to crypto. And I think that's highly improbable. Um, I was talking to Rick um, a while ago and I was saying that, you know, people are still having trouble inserting their cards into the slots at like Walmart, you know, like they still put it the opposite way. And then they're supposed to move to crypto. They can barely figure out their credit cards. So we've got to take baby steps in order to get to that quote unquote mass adoption. And like I said before, Two systems can run in parallel and still exist. I don't think fiat is dying anytime soon, but there needs to be alternatives to the current system. This is what I brought props for this question. And I'm Haitian American, first generation born in the United States. And both my family, both my parents' sides, they live in Haiti. And right here, this is the Haitian good, which is the currency for Haiti. And as you can see, there's a 25, a 10, a 10, um, and various fives. So printed on fresh off the press. And the reason why I bring this today is because, you know, one of the things that drew me to crypto was this idea of an alternate system. And Haiti is a very poor country. If you're not familiar with Haiti, it is a small little country in the Caribbean. And um, it's very poor. Um, the average salary, minimum wage in Haiti, I mean, it used to be like $2 a day, US dollars. I think it's up to like $5.11. But the good has lost around 44% of its value in the past five years. So while inflation in this country happens at like around 2% per year, um, you know, third world countries and developing countries feel the effect 10 times worse. So what I'm trying to get around is like this whole idea that the rest of the world is going are going through some serious issues. The United States pretty much controls the monetary system for the world. So if they're experiencing a little bit of inflation, other countries are experiencing a lot of inflation. And the mass adoption thing, it's important because I think that value needs to be returned to people that actually produce goods and services for the rest of the world. While you know they may not be working directly for you, they're picking the goods, and they're picking the the raw materials that allow people in Western nations or more affluent nations to enjoy the lifestyle that they have. And um, one of the things that Charles um, mentions is this idea of getting the unbanked population within this ecosystem. So I think that that's when we can start considering mass adoption, the steps towards mass adoption happening. Um, moving people that are working, the people that are working from the ground up, that are making, that are living on less than $2 a day, or in the case that I just said, making minimum wage, let's say $5, five US dollars a day, and are picking the raw materials that are gonna get shipped to China or are going to get shipped to somewhere else for manufacturing of certain goods. They need to rate. They need to retain more value, and they need to make sure that they can grow their little nest egg, even if it's not a lot. But being able to have a bank account, having a crypto account, and have your money digitally, digitally available for you, and able to pass a little bit of money from generation to generation to generation to bring you out of that never ending cycle of poverty. And I think that's where mass adoption starts. Starts. It's not like the United States and Americans and Europeans and um, you know 
Japanese and Chinese people um, that are affluent, not, I'm not saying that everyone within these countries is affluent, but I'm saying that the people that are affluent within these nations, it's not about them moving all their assets to crypto, but it's about moving the small little guy and little girl onto the crypto platform and allowing them to grow as people, allowing their families to grow, allowing them to flourish. I think that's when we can consider mass adoption. But this whole idea of everyone dropping everything and running, it's its just not going to happen. Not going to happen. The, the system itself right now, it works, doesn't work too well, but it works better than what crypto does right now. And eventually that things may switch, but for now, we need to focus on the people that are the most oppressed and then work our way up. And that's, I think, how we can quantify or um, the, the term mass adoption. Hey, great points there, Philippe. And you know what? You, there's Mass adoption is such a complex matter that there's so many different angles you can take to what you consider mass adoption. Like I just learned something from Philippe. I didn't even look at it from the perspective, although I've heard other, other videos uh, talking about, you know, a lot of times we've got people from IHK traveling to like Ethiopia and other places and and they're trying to introduce it to people who need a financial system, uh, a stable financial system. So that's one, one thing that would drive mass adoption. But I look at it from a, a very many different perspectives. One of them is how do I buy a taco with it? OK, so to me, that's to me, that's like the benchmark question. When I can go to Taco Bell and buy a taco with Ada, mass adoption has been achieved, at least from my narrow-minded perspective as an American, not that Americans are narrow-minded, but from a narrow perspective, if I could do that, to me, that's what a mass adoption would look like. Um, I could buy a taco with it. That might be a common question that comes up is, uh, hey, look at this really cool technology and all these great things we can do. And I love that kind of stuff. And then it boils down to how do I buy hamburger or something? So mass adoption, how do we get there? That then becomes a question. How do we get to the point of mass adoption? In my opinion, it's each one of us, those of us that understand crypto going out and finding just one other person and explain to them how how does crypto work what is it why is there a benefit um, those are the kind of things that we can do to each person can do with mass adoption i'm i'm not a developer the only thing i do with software as i break it by accident usually is what happens but um developers are not going to create the mass adoption developers are going to create the technology so we can't keep putting the responsibility on the developers and say, hey, when mass adoption, I'm just going to collect crypto and sit back and say, wait for the money to show up. I can't do that. We all have to take a little bit of part and get involved. There's all, something each of us could do. Um, of course, you don't want to be that uh, annoying guy in the office that sometimes gets referred to as Dan and you know always touting what cryptocurrencies are. But if you take the time to explain to one other person how cryptocurrency works, they'll have a better understanding. Like Philippe had mentioned earlier, and it was a real funny story too, was people putting their credit card in the machine wrong. That's me. I still do that. I We have chips. The U.S. is like halfway between slide and chip. And now the U.S. is halfway between once you stick your chip in, is it the green button or is it the red button? So now that I'm using my chip, now I got to figure out, should I push the green button or the red button to get my transaction to complete? And so even mass adoption, credit is considered mass adopted. Uh, it still has its issues every time they change something. So crypto is still way in its infancy. And everybody who knows crypto now, if you can just spell crypto, uh, and I like the word digital, like digital currency, because crypto carries this really nefarious kind of uh, sound to it. But anyway, that's just my preference. But if you can at least spell crypto, you could probably uh, explain to somebody else how to use it or what it does. 
and eventually it'll catch on. You know, if it's a good thing, it'll catch on because there's so many applications for it. And mass adoption applies to so many different areas. You got the stocks and bonds sector. You got the buying tacos and hamburgers sector. And, and you have, like Philippe mentioned, you have the sector of countries that are in need of a better financial system. And so the mass adoption includes all these different aspects. So anybody can uh, implement mass adoption. And speaking of developers and how developers can, uh, do that kind of stuff, Sebastian, what are your thoughts? What do you think? What is mass adoption? What does that mean when Lambo? Yeah, I mean, I feel like mass adoption kind of has two components to it, right? One of them is the actual usage of the currency, right? Can you really go buy a taco or this kind of stuff? And to, to a certain extent, there already exists an alternative economy based on cryptocurrencies, right? You know, you can go around and use uh, Bitcoins or ADA for a few various purposes. It's not used everywhere. Uh, it cannot be used everywhere, but there there is some, you know, subset of the economy that, that you know, can be uh, sustained by this model. In fact, a few people, you know, spend their lives trying to live, you know, unbanked, right? They try and move a hundred percent of cryptocurrency and they've kind of tweeted about it or whatever. So there's that component to mass adoption. I think there's also the component of actual participation in the system, right? So if you do a survey right now in most developed nations, do you know what, you know, Bitcoin is, you know, cryptocurrency or whatever, you know, a huge percentage of people say yes. If you ask people, have you ever owned any cryptocurrencies? A non-trivial percentage people will say yes, usually like in the single digits, you know, five, six percent, something like that. And so you could say we've already achieved a certain am amount of mass adoption of, of knowledge of the subject, right? Obviously, people don't have a, a deep understanding, but they have a, a understanding of this concept and, and kind of what it is and the, the fact that it exists, right? And I think to a certain extent, if we want to, to further this, then what we have to solve is kind of the participation asymmetry is, is what I, I like to think of it as, which is right now, if you look at cryptocurrencies, there's, there's two kinds of people, right? There's the people, you know, developing the protocol, which are highly involved in the project and all these technical decisions. And then there's everybody else, which is just the investors. They put money into it. And then that's, all that's the extent of their participation in the system right and they just hope something happens right and so how do we drive mass adoption not just in you know the five or six percent that, that buy the coin but the five or six percent that could join the project and, and get involved and i think what that really boils down to is how do we get people to participate in stuff like governance and stuff like block creation and staking and this kind of stuff and i think that's one of the reasons why i think you know, projects like Cardano can really help drive community participation. Because, you know, if you get involved in the Cardano ecosystem as the project develops, then you'll be able to, you know, build uh, your dApp on the protocol. You'll be able to, you know, deploy your smart contract. You'll be able to uh, contribute to the core protocol if you want. But you can also just, you know, participate in the staking pools and try and decide which staking pools should uh, you should join and which one is using the money it gains in the most moral way possible. And, you know, maybe if you run a staking pool, you can, you know, try and donate your proceeds to charity and get involved running something like that. Or you can get involved in the governance project and decide which projects get funded and this kind of stuff. And I think this is a different kind of, of mass adoption because even if the percentage of people that use, you know, ADA to transact does not increase, the involvement in the protocol, if we get five or six percent of the population involved in not just buying ADA, but involved in the governing process of ADA and, you know, deciding what the future of our protocol looks like. I mean, that's that's huge to me and that's massive adoption to me.